Greetings everyone, Erica Griffin here, Associate Director of Membership and Volunteer Services at the DuSable Museum of African American History. Welcome to Mondays at the Do, your headquarters for all things DuSable Museum. To learn more about us, please visit the website at www.dusablemuseum.org. You can give us a call over at the museum at 773-947-0600 or stop on by for a visit. Get a look at some of our amazing exhibitions. We are located at 740 East 56th Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Now, if you have questions throughout the show, please give us a call. 312-738-1060. We are standing by waiting for your call. And if you want to give us that special shout out on your social media sites, our hashtag is DoCanTV. That is D-U-C-A-N-T-V. Now all summer we have brought you amazing programs, exhibitions, educational programs, and special events. And this week is no different. Coming up on Wednesday, July 19th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., we have our Sounds of History Jazz Series. I know you all have been out there, and we've got another great installment in store for you. This uh, week's theme is the First Lady of Song, Ella Fitzgerald. We are celebrating 100 years, or her 100 years. So come on out, bring your lawn chairs, bring your family and friends, join us for a jazzy good time. We will be featuring both Denise Times as well as Dee Alexander. So I hope to see you all there. Now each Monday, with our show, we plan to introduce you to different staff members at the DuSable Museum, giving you that behind the scenes peek at how our, our museum runs, how we develop our events, our programs, our exhibitions, and today is definitely no exception. Our theme for this evening is Spotlight on the Archive and the Influence of Dr. Margaret Burroughs. Dr. Margaret Burroughs, of course, being the principal founder of the DuSable Museum. This evening, we are joined by our chief archivist, Ms. Skyla Hearn. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the museum world, not familiar with how they operate, there are three basic tenets that every museum operates on. Tenet number one is that all museums collect objects. Tenet number two is that they preserve these objects in perpetuity. And tenant number three is that they use these different objects to educate the public about different uh, themes or the mission of the museum itself. These objects could be pieces of art, could be clothing that was worn by a historical figure, could be anything that's made by a person. It could even be a photograph or a piece of document material. And that's where Miss Skyla Hearn's expertise comes into play. Good evening, Skyla. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Good evening, Erica. Thank you for having me here. This is exciting. We're excited to have you, Thank most you. definitely. Thank you. Now, if you wouldn't mind, could you tell our audience, those of who may not be familiar, what it actually means to be an archivist and how you yourself got interested in the field? Okay. So, um, archivists primarily are the safekeepers of um, historic materials, um, collections, and so forth. Uh, a lot of what our roles uh, cover are sometimes creating archives, um, maintaining, uh, preserving, and um, just just got a little nervous, sorry no, about no that. No worries. Uh, <laughs> but um, preserving and maintaining archival collections. Um, and we think about longevity, perpetuity, as you mentioned earlier, um, and the importance of documenting important histories. Um, and in our case, at the DuSable Museum, uh, my primary responsibilities are to safeguard uh, the collections of our founders, um, in addition to a lot of other um, collections that have come over the last 40 plus years uh, that we've been uh, at the DuSable Museum. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, that we've been at the location. Yes. Um, which first, as you know, began in Dr. Burroughs' home herself. Yes. So what kinds of materials or ephemera could become or could be placed in an archive? What sorts of things would you be looking for? 
Well, primarily when you think about an archival collection, you think of a body of materials that tells a story, a particular story. There are all types of materials that can be found in archival collections. Um, the first and foremost that we like to focus on are manuscript collections or papers, um, which as I mentioned, uh, tells a story um, we like from beginning to uh, end about what a said person or group's contributions um, have been to the local community, society, uh, and the world at large. Um, pieces that can be found in archival collections, aside from papers, are photographs, um, when thinking about um, ephemeral materials, broadsides, uh, buttons, um, and when speaking about ephemera, I'm talking about materials which cover a particular time in history. Uh, and these materials are often uh, very unique in that they've only represented that particular incident um, that occurred at that particular time in history. Okay. Now, how did you first get interested in being the gatekeeper, as you say, uh, to all these amazing materials? What interested you in this world? Well, it's funny, uh, Erica, uh, that you asked that question because, you know, often we know about librarians and the work of librarians, but not necessarily about, you know, the work of uh, archivists. And when I was an undergrad at mm -hmm. um, SIU, Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, I had the wonderful um, opportunity to work in special collections uh, at Morris Library, where my primary function there was to work as a digital archives assistant. Okay. Um, and just to fast forward, uh, the first collection that I ever worked on was Catherine Dunham. And oh, Catherine Dunham yes. is an amazing figure in our history. Mm -hmm. um, uh, being a sociologist, uh, the, a lot of people don't know that, um, a dancer choreographer. Um, but to, you know, work with her photographs really opened up my world in terms of like what archival collections were. And archival collections are so unique because they are the only ones that exist within the institutions where they're placed. So you'd have to go to those repositories in order to see these um, materials. So that's really what opened my eyes to like this wonderful world of art archives and these very unique materials and then also to get to learn people through the things in the sense that they've uh, left behind mm -hmm. and in her case uh, it was close to, it was over 5,000 photographs wow. so That's to be amazing. able to learn her life through her photographs absolutely amazing mm -hmm. yes so you're basically using these objects to construct a story or a more well-rounded and full story about the individual who the documents belong to basically. exactly okay. exactly and in her case it was primarily done through photographs um, mm -hmm. there's also um, a partner component which are the manuscript materials, the papers uh, that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Okay, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm just, again, so glad that you're here because this is an aspect of what I say call museuming that people <laughs> just don't really think about. Oh my goodness, it looks like we've got a caller. Okay. Hello, caller. Can you state your name and your question? Hello, my name is Ruthie. And, Hi, Ruthie. Um, and my question is this. Um, my parents passed away and I have all of their stuff and it's good stuff, and I want to know how do I give it to the museum? Okay, that's a very good question, and one that I'm sure you hear all of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna let you take that one. Okay, well, uh, Ruthie, you say your name is, right? Um, hi, thank you for calling in. Um, typically what would happen uh, if you would like to donate your materials to the museum is we would set up an appointment um, whereby I would be able to look over uh, the materials um, and then we could talk about uh, if the materials are um, a good fit for the museum. And what I mean by that is, you know, we, according to our practices, have to think about what our, um, what our mission is and if the materials are aligned with our mission. Um, and if they are then you know the conversation would continue in terms of you know um, us then becoming the safe keepers uh, for your materials and then in the case if say they weren't but there were another repository or information uh, institution um, in Chicago that better suited your materials then I would then help you um, to then begin the conversation with said institution um, but either way that it either way you know I would be very happy to help you um, look through the materials and talk about the best preservation practices um, for those materials before they were gifted to, a, to an institution. 
And I know that all of us, um, as people, we all have a family, we all have amazing stories that we may want to share. And another avenue that may be of interest to you, Miss Ruthie, would be to visit freedomsjourney.org. Mm -hmm. It is a website that um, uh, exists alongside our permanent exhibition, Freedom, Resistance, and Journey Toward Equality. And what this website does is allows individuals to share their family histories, stories of the Great Migration, stories of overcoming, um, African-American stories, you know, those that are so often overlooked. Mm -hmm. So I definitely encourage you to visit that site and share your stories with us in that way for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, Skyla, another question. I know that you are super busy. I see you all the time running here, there, and everywhere in the museum. You've got a gang of interns. You all are doing great work. But what was your first task when you came into the museum, went up those stairs to see the archive? What was your first plan of action? I'll say that. First plan of action. Okay, you are absolutely right. Um, <laughs> there, there is a lot. There's a lot to be done. Um, so when first walking into the archives, uh, I immediately thought about you know um, a preliminary survey and inventory, uh, just to take note of what it was that I was looking at, um, and from that point to literally um, attempt to touch everything in the space, um, and then to so after you know just going through the material. Um, getting a hold on uh, what was actually there, then uh, conducting conducting excuse me um, an assessment of the material, so that then I could go back and you know talk to um, uh, you know coworkers such as yes. yourself um, <laughs> and other in various departments about the materials that we had that could then support um, programs projects yes. um, that were uh, then coming up, and then also thinking about you know um, how to um, provide access to mm -hmm. these materials. So, I mean, initially, you know, yeah. I just, I, 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 I hit the ground running, as Most they say. definitely, we all know. do. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, thank you for that. Um, sure. And that's something else that I think people might not uh, think about is that all the work that Skyla does definitely helps support our exhibitions, helps to support our programs, helps to support our educational department. You know, we all work together to bring these different um, experiences to you, the public. Um, and I just, again, want to thank you for all the amazing work that you have done turning that archive into something for sure. Yes, definitely. Um, and I do have one example here just to show you how the archive incorporates itself into our exhibitions. What you're looking at here is an image from one of our exhibitions, Red, White, Blue, and Black, A History of African Americans in the Armed Services. So at the bottom, you're going to notice that there are a series of medals that all belong to Captain James C. Hall, an African American captain during World War I. Um, but what's also adding to and enhancing this particular um, this particular uh, piece in the in the exhibition are the two different objects above it. One is a Croix de Guerre uh, or an award that was given to Captain James C. Hall, which is actually the highest military award that you can receive in France. And then also a photograph, including Captain James C. Hall and some of his other fellow um, infantrymen and fellow officers. But again, these different objects that Skyla finds um, in the archive help to support whatever the mission or the theme uh, of the various exhibitions are that we have on display. So we just want to make sure that we touch on that for just a moment. So I know you found amazing treasures just like uh, the um, pieces here from Captain James C. Hall, but do you have one archival object or document that you thought like, wow, this is really interesting. This is pretty cool. Anything that comes to mind? Oh man, Erica, there are so many things. I'm I, sure. mm -hmm. Honestly, I can't just say that there's just one. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this is, this isn't just a job for me. This is my vocation. It's my Most calling. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, you know, when I run across these things um, and just, you know, that background, like this is the DuSable Museum of African American History, yes. mm -hmm. right? And there's a plethora of materials that we have in our archives. I've ran across um, very rare books, you know, that speak to our special collections. You're speaking the language. Yes, uh, in our <laughs> library. And, you know, letters from Kwame Nkrumah, yes, wow. uh, to Dr. Burroughs, wow. um, and to... Um, 
Abbott, excuse me, uh, the Chicago Defender, uh, who started the Chicago Defender. Um, yes. He was coming to the United States. He mm -hmm. wanted to sit down and have a meeting, yes. you know, with these key figures um, in Chicago. So just, you know, to be able to run across uh, materials such as that and uh, Dr. Burroughs, which, you know, we'll get into a little bit yes, um, mm -hmm. in a few minutes. Yes. But uh, Dr. Burroughs started this Arts and Crafts Festival and I ran across some photographs from one of the very first Arts and Crafts Festivals. Amazing. Um, so things like that you know and now to see some of those pillars who are still in our community yes, and to mm -hmm. see them then as young you know younger people yes, <laughs> and to yes, and yes. to know them now yes. um just it's just amazing the things that absolutely amazing mm -hmm. oh this is just i'm so loving this episode yeah. all right i believe we have another <laughs> caller hi caller can you state your name and your question uh, yes i just wanted to make a point with regard to uh procedural issue, uh, it's nothing substantive, but uh, I mean, I received your programming vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Xfinity Comcast. Uh, unfortunately, uh, on the guide, it, it indicates that this is a disability museum of African American history, not the DuSable Museum of African American history. So to anyone looking to, to find out what's on, they would get the wrong impression. So I, I, I would suggest you probably won't want to take that up with uh, Xfinity, since they are a major carrier of CAN TV. Thank you so much for that. We will definitely let the good folks at Can TV uh, know that they've got to to change that heading there. Thank you so much, caller. I appreciate that definitely. Um, you know, as we are talking, Skyla, mm -hmm. about the amazing things we have going at the DuSable, about your great work, all I can think about is how proud Dr. Burroughs must be of us. Yes. I mean, we have taken yeah, her dreams and goals and expanded upon them, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that she's looking down on us uh, with, with favoritism for sure. Now, could you give us, our listeners, those who may not be so familiar with Dr. Burroughs, just a brief overview of who she was and how she came up with this concept of a black history museum? Okay, sure. Uh, Dr. Burroughs was a revolutionary thinker, uh, an amazing woman, an activist from the very beginning. Um, Dr. Burroughs began her activism at a very young age, uh, around 17 uh, yes. years old, you know, which started um, with the focus on the art community, actually, um, with the Southside Community Art Center. And Dr. Burroughs has always, it seemed to me, recognized that there was a void um, mm -hmm. and that, you know, the needs of African-American community were not being addressed and I think that she was amazing and that she was able to address these voids and to be able to create these spaces um, for us within our own communities and uh, so I'm sorry should we and so call? Mm -hmm, there's okay. a caller so oh okay we're gonna take a we're gonna pause I can really pause quick. on that yeah note. we'll pick right back up okay. caller can you state your name and your question thanks for calling hi yes my name is Nicole hi Nicole how are you? Hey, I'm doing just fine. How are you? We are great. Thank, Thank you for you. calling. Yes. Good. So I know you all are, are speaking about Dr. Rose, but I do have a question. If you could just explain for some of the younger viewers, I have my daughter here who's watching. Can you explain? Uh oh. Did we lose you? Did we lose you, ma'am? I'm still here. Oh, okay, great. All right. Go right ahead. Hi, my name is Candace, and I recently visited the museum. I think it's wonderful. My question is, how are you moving forward and helping more people experience the DuSable? Well, um, we have a lot of different initiatives um, going to make sure that we're broadening our reach. Um, so we make sure that we always have one day that's complimentary. Uh, and and uh, that means anyone can visit us. We're open not, um, from 10 to 5. Uh, we also reach out to, we broaden our net as far as school groups as well. So we don't just limit ourselves to the south side schools. Mm -hmm. We also open ourselves up to the north side, out of state, colleges, universities, adult tour groups. Anyone that is interested in learning more about black history and black Chicago, our doors are always open for them for sure. I hope that answered your question because we've got another caller. Hi, caller. Can you state your name and your question? Hey, it's Nicole again. I'm Hi, Nicole. Sorry we got cut off there. <laughs> That's okay. So my question is for Skyla. Um, I have my daughter here. Can you explain to her exactly what an archivist is and what is your favorite part of being an archivist? 
Okay, well, what an archivist is, is we are people who protect, create, maintain, and preserve archival collections. And so how I like to explain archival collections to our younger folks is that's the part of the library or um, an information center that you can't take home with you mm -hmm. because those materials are very unique. And oftentimes they are the only ones of their kind. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the times, a lot of the materials in the archives are used for publishing books um, and for talking about you know different incidents, different people, that we know little about. Um, and what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry, I forgot that. Your favorite part of being an archivist. Oh, mm -hmm. just being able to uh, introduce people to the materials that I have in the, in the archives um, and to be able to be the person to be able to preserve this history and to communicate the importance of these materials and the importance of the contribution, the contributors, excuse me, and the creators of these materials. And in our case, of course, being African Americans and us a, a lot of times being unsung, unsung excuse Excuse me, heroes um, within like the constructs of you know American, American history. history. So being able to expose all of these wonderful contributions, materials, um, and to share about you know um, the the wonderful things that have come from the African American community. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Have a favorite collection that you've worked with. Favorite collection that you've worked with. Oh, there's so many. Yes. Um, <laughs> you just put me on the spot. <laughs> but currently, uh, my favorite collection is the Dr. Burroughs collection, um, which has been processed uh, at the DuSable Museum. Um, Dr. Burroughs, um, our wonderful founder, uh, has a collection over of over 100 boxes, which helped to explain, um, you know, her path uh, and how she became, you know, an educator, an activist, um, and her processes for, you know, uh, creating the artworks that uh, she's created as well as her art and education program that she developed um, in the prison systems so it's just wonderful being able to go through these materials and learn more about her especially since I didn't have the pleasure of meeting um, meeting her when she right, was alive right. So we hope you answered your question. Thank you so, so very much for calling and hello to your daughter. I hope I that we were able to give her some information and maybe she's a future archivist in the making. Yes. Thank you so much for calling. Fingers crossed. Yes, fingers crossed. <laughs> we have another caller. Hello, caller. State your name and your question. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm wondering, do you guys do any workshops? Yes. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, we do. And w w at one point, we did offer workshops, and we will be uh, offering them again. Yes, indeed. Uh, beginning spring 2008. Mm -hmm. And 18. in these, yes, 2018. Yes. 2008 already <laughs> happened. <laughs> um, within these workshops, you'll be able to learn from like a do it yourself approach about how to preserve or how to continue to preserve if you've already started um, your own personal archive uh, or your family's archive. Um, and or the community that you represent um, and so within this uh, within the workshop it'll be hands-on um, hands-on activities uh, as well as you know resource materials will be given to you to take away and then of course you know I'll always be around as a as a re as a reference for you yes mm-hmm all right now, again, for those of you who have questions or those of you who want to stop by for a visit or just want to know more about the DuSable, again, we are at www.dusablemuseum.org. You can give us a call, 773-947-0600, or you can always, always stop by for a visit, 740 East 56th Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Both Skyla and myself more than likely will be in the building should you have any questions or want to chat with us. Now, as we were talking, Dr. Burroughs and her legacy is something that is pivotal, not just to mm -hmm. the museum, not just to us, but to the city at large. As you yes, mentioned, definitely. she truly was a phenomenal woman, a Renaissance woman, and had her hands in so many different arenas besides the museum. There's the Southside Community Arts Center. Um, there's her work that she did in the prisons, the work that she did at DuSable High School. Mm -hmm. She just 
there's very, very little that you can say she did not have a hand in. Sure. So for sure, we know that she's looking down on us and pleased with the work that we are doing. We're continuing her legacy. You know, one of her, you know, amazing poems, What Will Your Legacy Be? Mm -hmm. We're hoping that we're giving youth and adults an answer to that question, one that fills Dr. Burroughs with pride and also them with pride as well. So we want to thank you again for sitting in with us and chatting with us and calling in to Mondays at the Dew. Yes. We want to give a special thank you to the good folks at Can TV. We want to give another shout out to all of our co-workers that are watching at the Du Sable Museum of African American History. And most of all, we want to thank all of you again for visiting with us, chatting with us. And we hope to see you next Monday on Mondays at the Dew. Bye, everyone. Bye.